Good evening, everybody. This is Cinema Noir. And welcome to the finale of Deltarune Chapter 2. It was all a dream. I used to read Word Up magazine. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty intense. And Susie was here the whole time. Yeah, we were working on our school project. The most important school project. Oh, we've been playing around in that computer closet for a long, long time. See you, Birdly. We hardly knew you. Notice she's trying to see the tail. Oh! <laughs> and Susie turns into a very bad MS Paint doodle. <laughs> she just wants to get to know you. We sure did. We're big damn heroes. And nobody knows who we are, just like Spider-Man. That's true. We better keep this on the DL. Yeah, whew. A lot of stress. It's been a big day. But first, the trash can. You have a feeling the trash can does not have friends. And for some reason this makes you inexplicably sad. Because you are Toby Fox and you anthropomorphize literally everything. Mm, no internet. Boy, is it hard to survive without the internet. Am I right, people? <sighs> so, yes, we need to take everything back. Because, of course, we're going to bring it to Ralsei, and he's going to turn it into... Wait, was this guy here the whole time? Creepy. That's not surprising. Anyway, let's go uh, make Ralsei turn the world back on again. Yeah, it's so late that it's completely bright outside. Game Maker has a few limitations. I don't know if you've noticed. Oh. Susie, you're just a big softie on the inside. So yeah, back to school. There's nobody around, because just like last time, this all lasted until the late afternoon. And so school is over. And we must go back into the closet, like R. Kelly. Oh. Didn't expect you to show up right off the bat. Yep. <gasps> we didn't save Nubbert. So yes, Nubbert is like your bonus for sparing everybody. He's, you know, I don't know if you remember the end of Wreck-It Ralph, but Nubbert decided he wasn't going to leave until everybody else was safe, and we didn't make everyone else safe, so Nubbert is gone forever. But whatever, I, I don't really care. If you care, play this game, because it's a fun game. And you can do what I failed to do. Really, it's okay to play this game different ways, no matter what every single fan of Undertale will tell you. You thought about how you can't go back to Cyberworld anymore, and you failed, and you're a horrible person. No. Toby Fox is not that judgmental. In fact, one of the interesting things I found about Toby Fox, and this was something I saw just recently, is that Toby Fox is not nearly as much of a bigot in favor of his own games as some of his fans are. Toby Fox once said in a message to people that he thought Undertale was about an 8 out of 10 as games go, which surprisingly is much closer to my estimation of it than it is to most fans' estimation of it. So really, I feel like Toby Fox has his head on straight. He's a nice guy. Yeah, also, important point. People complaining about, oh, you didn't save everybody in Cyberworld. We have Lancer. 
Why do you need anyone else if you have Lancer? It's just like an Undertale. Why would you need to save anybody besides Burger Pants? I could live the rest of my life with it being just me and Burger Pants. Yeah, I don't know why I used that, the Lancer cookie, but... Maybe I felt I deserved a little treat. After all this stress. And as you know from me talking about in this playthrough, this was not just stress related to Deltarune, this was stress related to life. I think, in a way, we've all been feeling a lot of stress lately. These last two years have really put people through the ringer. I hope you guys are getting by. I hope you're able to still be happy and spend time with your friends. Because that's really what life's all about. And it's why I play Toby Fox games and upload videos about them to the internet in a genre that most people have not been interested in for many, many years. You know, I feel like the problem with cauldron cooking is that everything would have to be boiled. Including cake. I, I wouldn't boil cake. That doesn't seem like a good idea. So yes, here is the living quarters for the bad people. I'll talk to the king again. He might have something new to say. So yeah, the king actually gets kind of shirty with you if you don't save everybody. His feeling seems to be that you're not as nice a person as you say you are. And I suppose if you don't spare everybody, that sort of confirms his opinion of you. Again, you could see that as Toby Fox being very judgmental, but writing a character who is judgmental is not necessarily the same thing. But Toby Fox is a little bit judgmental. How many breakable pots do you have? Probably not as many as you had before Queen Gun. Oh, thank God Lancer's okay. I, I don't think I could keep on if, if something happened to Lancer. I really don't. Which means Toby Fox is probably going to kill him in Chapter 5, because we all know how these multi-part series works. By the fifth part, they always start getting a little antsy and having trouble finishing things, and they say, Oh, I'll kill a major character. That'll drum up interest. Don't let that happen, Toby Fox. If you're listening, somehow, I don't know how the hell that would happen. But if you're listening, do not do that in Chapter 5, okay? Because I'll find you. Now, anyway, we have now brought back all of the cyber people that we saved, which is about 7 out of 13, I believe, plus the queen. So let us finally go home, relax, and unwind a bit. And who knows, maybe Susie will join us. She seems to have gotten over her intense uh, avoidance of social interaction. Well, okay then. Bye, Susie. Hello there. Get on in here. Susie literally just ate a cake, but everyone has room for more cake. I mean, that's one of the, just the truisms of society. There is no such thing as not wanting cake. I presume at some point Susie would have taken kindergarten from Toriel, but I guess maybe she didn't live here the whole time? It's hard to say. Uh, yeah, I'll bet Alphys often talks about Susie. Alphys can't confront anybody, but she sure does love to gossip, as we know from seeing Undertale. Come on, it's a piece of cake to make a pretty cake, as they say. Oh. Friendship is great. <laughs> In with the wrong crowd. I'm just a blank slate. Ow, my arm. <laughs> oh, okay, sweet. I think Susie picked up a few mannerisms from listening to Queen talk. Beep boop. Sweet. So, yeah, as with Chapter 1, 
also ended in our house. Ooh, metal people shapes. Everyone loves metal people shapes. Oh. Straight sugar. Just, just puffs there. I see no reason not to run the tap. Although, it does seem like Chris is treating this as a bit more of a big deal. Curious. I notice he's not washing his hands. I notice he's slumped over. <laughs> well, it has been a long day. I'm sure Chris is just tired and worn out, and he's punching himself in the face. And, oh, yeah, I remember that. Remember the end of Chapter 1? Well, it's happening again. Now he's locking his heart under the sink, which is possibly the grossest place to put your heart. I mean, maybe in the toilet would have been worse. That would have been funny. I don't know why Toby Fox didn't do that. Come on, Toby Fox, hire me to write for you. Seriously, dude, I have so many good ideas. But yeah, now we're going to see Chris go out the window. Whomp. <laughs> Meanwhile, back to baking. <laughs> So here we have a bit of an interesting dichotomy. Susie is sort of more overtly violent and aggressive, but underneath, she always had a heart of gold. She's not a bad person. Chris, meanwhile, is sort of ambivalent, like doesn't seem good or bad. But underneath, he, um... There's, there's something wrong with Chris. I think that's pretty obvious by this point. The teaser cliffhanger ending of Chapter 1 kind of suggested that. This, I think, is going even farther with this. Like, what is Chris doing right now? And meanwhile, just meaningless dialogue. <laughs> totally meaningless. Ooh. Can't believe she said a curse. Oh, there we go. Chris is back from strangling puppies or whatever it is he does. Oh, there we go. Back to normal. It's like I was never there. Mm. Yeah, there's always time for pie. Sleepover? What is this, the 90s? Well, apparently people still watch TV in this universe, so it kind of is the 90s. Time for relaxation and fun friendship. Ain't that the truth? I don't think my mom lets me watch any of those movies. <laughs> no one likes Icy the movie. That's the minions of this universe. And it's funny how things work out. This Dark World thing was so scary and unfamiliar when we started, but now it's just leading to friendship. But 
maybe, who knows, there's five chapters left of this game, it could go in a different, much darker direction. And it kind of seems like that's what Toby Fox is going for. This may even get darker than Undertale. I mean, I know a lot of people think that'd be hard to do, but it could happen. Yeah, but Lancer couldn't make him a good fake mustache, because Lancer's not capable. Senior prom. Or like Matsuri if you're an anime fan. Mm. I don't think Ralsei is a. I, I, I whatever. <laughs> oh. Am I going for it? I think I might be going for it. We're taking Susie. We are freaking taking Susie. Even though, like, two other characters were already in love with him, somehow. Oh, you're so oblivious. Man, dinosaurs on ma- on mountains. Dinosaurs on buildings. Oh, yeah. Hell yes. <laughs> we're staying up all night. We're watching M-rated movies. And Susie's already asleep. It has been a long day. It's been very stressful. <sighs> you will notice, however, that Chris is not asleep. Okay, you will notice now that Chris is asleep. But this is not yet quite the end. Interesting. Well then, the plot thickens. What a couple of little angels. Except in Chris's case. Oh no. Oh, no. Don't do anything to Susie, dude. You. Toby Fox, if something happens to Susie right now, I will never forgive you. I mean, Lancer is more important, but still, Susie, solid second place character. And he's got that knife. And what the hell is he doing? You might recall that the Queen said that the Knight plunged a knife into the ground, and the fountain came out. Of course, she also said anyone could do it, so... Is Chris the Knight? Is Chris just doing it? Who's doing it? These are difficult questions. They're also very vague questions, but perhaps someday they will be answered, or perhaps not. It's difficult to say. This is a Toby Fox game. Seven days. <laughs> Actually, knowing Toby Fox, probably more like seven years. Once again, we have a cliffhanger ending. It's pretty creepy. And once again, we have musical credits. I seriously thought for a minute when I played this that this was actually glitching out on me. It's like this was my computer failing. Because my computer's not a great computer. It, um, <laughs> you know, it has the potential to crash. But no, this is actually just a, this is the style of the song. It's very 90s. It reminds me of like the late 90s. Especially, uh, A Thousand Miles by whatever her name is. So yeah. Very similar credits to the first one. I feel like Toby Fox is bringing on a few more people, but he still doesn't want to make it a studio. He's very auteur. He's very obsessed with making it his own vision. Uh, 
Um, and I don't know how to feel about that. I really feel like if he'd get more people involved, he could actually make this game faster. He could make other games. And it would be better for his studio, you know? He could have a bigger influence in the world. I feel like what's standing in the way most for him is his own, you know, his own personality, his unwillingness to change and grow. But we'll see. Hopefully, Chapter 3 will come up soon. We'll all be able to see it and play it. And that'll be fun. Um, I'll, look, I'll be looking forward to it. I hope you guys will, too. But I'm just going to end this with one little statement now that the video is over. Um, if there's one thing that this chapter, this game, really, I feel, because these are games. They last several hours apiece. They have their own credits. They're individual games. But anyway, if there's one thing that this game not so much taught me as made me think while I was playing it, it's this. Um, be good to your friends. Even if your friends can be mean sometimes, even if they make mistakes, even if they make you feel bad, they're people who care about you. They're people who know you. And you should try to make it work to the extent that you possibly can. Um, I definitely know that with me and Greg, we had a tough friendship sometimes. But I wish it hadn't ended the way it did. And one of the things that it makes me think about is that you can never really know when a friendship of yours is going to just end, when someone's going to be taken from you or choose to leave. So when that happens, I think you don't want your friendship to have ended on bitter words or arguments, or even to have ended the way my friendship with Greg ended, with just silence, with a friendship that lasted a long time and that felt strong disappearing. Um... Try hard to hold on to your friends. It's important. Friendship is one of the greatest things in life. Um, and honestly, like one last message. Greg, I hope you're doing well. Uh, and I miss you. So, good night, everybody. I'll see you next time. Whether it's a Let's Play or a video, I'll be looking forward to it.